Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBase.net. This week we're going to take a look at something I mentioned a few weeks ago in the power chords lesson, and that's the strumming technique. So we'll have a quick look at how to get the uh, technique under our fingers, and then look at some basic riffs that you can practice. Remember, if you want to download the lesson material for this video, it's all available over at TalkingBase.net. Just follow the link in the info below. There's the sheet music and tab to everything in the lesson, and while you're out there, just check out all the other free lessons on the lesson map, which are all systemized and categorized for ease of navigation. Then, if you want some more practice resources, just subscribe for free to gain access to the members area, where you'll find a whole load of ebooks and practice material just ready uh, to get your teeth into. So, when we talk about strumming on bass, we usually mean the strumming of chords, like this. And if you want to hear some great examples of this kind of playing, then you can start by checking out guys like Stanley Clark, Victor Wooten and Les Claypool. They're all masters of this technique. Stanley Clark was one of the originators of this technique and he really popularised it with the riff uh, from his tune School Days, which sounds like this. <laughs> Les Claypool does a lot of strumming both on its own and along with slapping, like his riff from the song Tommy the Cat. And Victor Wooten is just a master of this technique, and you might have heard him playing some things like this. Now, I've got a bunch of different lessons devoted to different types of chords on bass, so if you need any help with any of them, then just visit the Chords tab on the lesson map at TalkingBass.net. If you're used to only playing one note at a time on bass, then chords might seem a little alien to you, so I'd advise you to at least have the power chord lesson well and truly nailed. If you're okay with basic power chords, then that should be enough, but remember, I will be showing you the basic fingerings again, so don't worry too much. So, let's start with the basic strum. So first we need a chord. So let's go with a basic power chord on the D and G strings. So we'll try an A power chord. So for this chord, just hold down the seventh fret of the D string, so that's the A there. That's with the first finger, or index finger. And then I want you to play the ninth fret on the G string, so that's the E, so. And that's with the fourth finger, or pinky. So that's it, that's the chord. Okay, so you want that first finger and fourth finger held down, and it's A and E on the D and G strings. Now, on the power chords lesson, all we did was play with those first two fingers, like this, as if we were just finger picking. But uh, to strum that chord, we do this. Okay, so you can see that I'm strumming there with the fingernails of the, uh, of the picking hand, or strumming hand. So we hold down that chord, and you kind of move from this knuckle here. So you can see that I'm going from this kind of curled hand to an outstretched hand, okay? So you just thrust it out like that. So that is the action, okay? And uh, you can uh, also see there that I'm using the thumb as an anchor. So I've got the thumb there on the A string and it's kind of pulling back a little bit to catch the E string. So um, that way I'm muting both the E and the A strings. I don't want any noise coming from there. And um, you know, it just anchors the, uh, the hand there in the right position. So that way, you know, if I was to just have a free hand, there is the likelihood that you can get kind of open strings ringing out like residual noise, so this keeps that all in check. So, as, I, as you'll see later on in the lesson, we are actually going to try some strumming where we're not anchored, but for now, just try anchoring just until you get used to that move, okay? So, fingernails, curled hand to open hand, and that's it. So, now let's try learning a basic riff. So, the riff is going to sound like this. Okay, so we begin with the chord that we've just played, the A power chord. So we've got the uh, first finger on the A there, fourth finger on the E, so seventh fret of the D string and the ninth fret of the G string. 
Then we just move that whole chord down two frets. So now we're on the fifth fret of the D string and the seventh fret of the G string. So that's again with the first and fourth fingers. So, okay, so that pattern has just moved down two frets, easy, okay? So we're on a G and a D, okay? Then the next chord, we just keep that chord in position and we just move the first finger down to the fourth fret, okay? So that's the chord. So we've got the first finger on the fourth fret of the D string, which is an F sharp, and we've got the fourth finger still up there at the uh, D on the seventh fret of the G string. Okay, so once we've played that chord, we then come back to our standard G power chord. So we just move that first finger back up. So all we've done is move the first finger down and then back. The fourth finger has just stayed exactly where it is on that seventh fret. And the first finger moved from fifth fret, fourth fret, fifth fret on the D string. So I'll just play all of that together. So we have Okay, so in terms of what those chords are, we have an A power chord, a G power chord, and then that's actually a D major kind of first inversion kind of thing, because we've got the third there as the uh, F sharp. But don't worry too much about the analysis. So, rhythmically, two, three, four, one, two, and, okay? So the tempo is one, two, three, four. So we have one, two, three, four. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, and, okay? One, two, three, four, one, two, and. So that last chord is on the and of two. But you'll probably get it just with the feel, just from listening to it. So a few times around. One, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay and that's the riff now when i played that riff you could hear i was cutting the chords off if i was to let the chords hold we'd have this but when we cut the chords off we get a little bit more feel from it so we have one two three four so we're only holding for one beat okay and to cut the note off, I'm just releasing pressure on the fingers. You can also bring this hand down to cut it off as well. Okay, so once again, just listen to how uh, long I hold the chords for, because this is good for getting control over the chords. Oops, three, four. Now let's try adding a bit of movement in there by uh, adding some upstrokes. Now, the strums that we've used so far have strummed down. We've, there is downstroke, but we can also create an upstroke when we come back by catching the strings again as we come back with the uh, pads of the fingers. So if I was to play that A power chord again, So I strum down and then the fingers catch the strings as I come back. So again, it's still this kind of motion. C there. Okay. So let's try adding some of those, uh, those upstrokes in there uh, onto our riff. And so the riff's gonna sound like this. Okay, so all we're doing is strumming down and back on each chord, apart from the last one, so that we get a bit more emphasis on that one. Slow, three, four. So like I say, I'm just strumming down and then back and catch him with the uh, pads of the fingers. We can also add some little percussive sounds in there to really emphasize that, uh, that back beat in there. So um, there's loads of different ways of doing this, but all we're gonna do is just bring the knuckles of this hand, those knuckles there, down onto the strings, okay? So uh, 
you'll see how this works. So if I was to play the first chord, we just bring those knuckles down and we get that little percussive noise. So we're hitting there on two and four, so on the back beat. So if we add that into the whole riff, we have Okay, a little quicker. We can fill that rhythm out even more by using ghost notes to fill in between the uh, in between the chords. So um, to do this, to just to start with, all I want you to do is lay the hands lightly over the strings there, just relax them on the strings, and uh, back in the same position that we did for the uh, for playing the chords there, and. All you want to do is play straight eighth notes, one and two and three and four, and by playing the alternating stroke. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so we've got that motion going on. So because we've got nothing, no notes in there, because we've rested the hand across, we don't get any notes. So we just get these ghost notes. So just practice that to begin with. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Okay, so it sounds kind of, um, you know, useless like that, but uh, when we put it into the riff, you'll see how it can make a big difference. So before we do that though, now I want you to emphasize or put an accent on two and four, so on the back beat. So that would sound like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and okay. So that's the first exercise to try. You want to really get used to feeling where that backbeat is. That one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Because the more you can feel that when you're playing these uh, these riffs, the better the feel of it will become. The more likely that you are to be able to just automatically put things on those backbeats, like the, you know, well, like cutting the notes off, putting the percussive bits on there, and, you know, accenting these ghost notes. So, now let's try putting those ghost notes into the riff. So, it's gonna sound like this. Okay, so, we're pretty much keeping a constant motion with the hand. So... So you could just start by just playing that chord, two, two hits on it, you know, down, up, and then just ghost notes for the remainder. Then add the next chord. Okay. Just between them. So we've got two chords, two ghost notes. Okay, now let's move on to the next chord. Oops, sorry. Three, four. Okay. Now we just add the final chord. Now in between that chord and that chord, we only have one ghost note, okay? Because because of where that chord's positioned rhythmically. So we have So we're hitting that chord with the upstroke. The ghost notes with the downstroke. The chord is with the uh, is with the upstroke. And then we just put two ghost notes at the end. So there's a little gap there afterwards, and that's just to emphasise that syncopation. So. Rest, and then the two ghost notes. Okay. quicker now we can 
try another riff incorporating the A string. Okay, so again, we're just going to use power chords, but we're going to use extended power chords. So it's going to be three note power chords. So root, fifth, octave. Okay, now the riff is going to sound like this. So it's very similar to the first uh, to the first riff, same rhythm. It's just different chords. Okay, so we begin with an E power chord. So that's E, 7th fret of the A string, B, 9th fret of the D string, and E, 9th fret of the G string. First finger for the, on the A string for the E, and then we just bar the 4th finger across at the 9th fret on the D and G strings. Okay, and if you've watched the power chords uh, lesson that uh, I did a couple of weeks ago, you should probably know that chord by now. So. There's the E power chord. Then the next chord is a D power chord. So we take that whole thing, that whole shape, just move it down two frets. So we've got fifth fret, A string, and then the seventh fret, D and G string. Same fingering, first finger and uh, barring with the fourth finger. So, then we move up to a G power chord. So that's at the 10th fret there. So we've got G, 10th fret of the A string, and then D and G, 12th fret, Barred again. Okay, so that's it. That's the uh, three chords we've got in there. So E, D, G, E. And uh, as I did with the first riff, you know, I'm cutting those uh, chords off, so I'm not holding them on like this. We're cutting off at the end of each beat. Okay, and uh, you can also see that anchoring with the thumb, you know, obviously we can't put the thumb on the A string this time because we're playing it. So I've got the thumb there on the E string. Okay, now let's just work through the same variations that I used on the first riff. Okay, so first of all, let's try putting some upstrokes in there. So we're going to uh, try the alternating picking or alternating strumming. So uh, the riff will sound like this. Okay, so again, you know, I've just got strum down, strum up. Okay, so if you've got used to that first riff, that should seem quite easy. And um, it's worth uh, mentioning at this point that when I do strum, I'm using pretty much those first three fingers. The pinky, the fourth finger, doesn't really come into play. You know, you can't really get all of those fingers down there. I have seen uh, some people strum with two fingers, you can do that as well. Uh, but when you're, you know, in this kind of position, you're most likely to get those three fingers there, okay? Now, let's try putting those little percussive hits in there. So, to do this, again, I'm just going to use the knuckles, so that'll sound like this. Okay, and finally, let's try putting those ghost notes in there. So, just like we did before. So we're just going to be putting those ghost notes in with the uh, alternating hits. So that will sound like this. As I mentioned before, you can download the sheet music and tab for these uh, for these riffs. Just go on over to talkingbass.net. Just follow that info uh, below, because sometimes it can be quite difficult just watching the video. It's sometimes easier if you can actually see the notes on the page. Okay, so uh, make sure to visit talkingbass.net if you're having any problems. So that's one version of the strumming technique where we anchor the thumb, but we don't need to do that all the time. Sometimes a riff might move between techniques, so we might go from slapping and popping to strumming and back. Uh, so you might get a riff that sounds like this. And when you get a riff like that and you're having to move between them, obviously you're not going to be able to keep going from the anchored thumb to the slap and back. So you just have to get used to having the hand loose. So uh, it's worth practicing trying with that kind of loose hand. Now you don't have to start putting in all those slaps and pops uh, immediately, but it is worth getting used to, you know, just playing as we did before, but without the thumb anchored. Now the thumb anchor is still useful, it, you know, it's not like you just need to use one or the other. 
uh, the anchor is good when you just stick into chords. You know, because it's, it's good for muting. So if nothing else is going on, you know, that's quite useful. But like I say, when you're playing anything, well, let's say that something like, you know, the one that covers the three, uh, the three strings uh, that we tried earlier, the free hand technique, the uh, sort of loose hand there, can actually feel a little bit more comfortable because you can really get into the motion and the rhythm of it. So just try that riff, okay? So this is gonna be the, um, the one using the A, uh, D and G strings. So the E power chord. Okay, just try that without having the thumb anchored. So just try the, the simple one first without all the ghost nuts in. And you can see there the thumb, it's not anchored, I've just got it loose up there. The hand, it, I'm still using the same strokes, you know, the same method of in and out there with that. But the thumb is kind of in slapping position. You know, that kind of loose thumb. So then once you've got mastered that, you can go into the ghost notes. So we just keep, keep it moving. Now, one little technical difficulty that you might run into when you're playing like this is because we don't have the thumb anchored, you know, we're not muting those, uh, those lower strings. So on something like this, it's worth using the second finger there to just catch that E string because we're not using it for the chord. So, and that helps stopping any open strings coming out. See there, that second finger, it's lightly touching on the E string. I mean, obviously, you want to aim for just striking those A, D and G strings. You know, you want to try and aim for accuracy with the, uh, with the strum, but sometimes, you know, you can catch those open strings. So that's where this comes in handy. You could also bring the thumb round if your hands are big enough. But um, I tend to just use that second finger. Okay, so hopefully that'll help with getting you a little into strumming. As I mentioned earlier, just check out Victor Wooten, Les Claypool and Stan the Clark for some great examples of this technique. And remember the uh, sheet music and tab for this lesson, they're all available to download from TalkingBass.net, so uh, go check that out. Okay, I'll see you later.